Wow, welcome to episode 7. I'm having a quarter-life crisis and I'm going to go down the line of everything that's happening right now. So my apologies for not being here last week. I have plenty of stories for you and excuses for you. Very, very excusable excuses. So, okay, let's see. Where do I even start off? I'm My birthday is on February 2nd. I'm having my quarter-life crisis. It's happening. I can feel it happening. It's coming. When you turn 25, your brain is fully developed. I'm not as smart as I wanted to be at 25, so that's going good. That That is a total joke, by the way. I think I'm very smart, but your brain does stop developing at 25. Pretty sure it's fully developed by then. But yeah, welcome to episode seven. Sorry I skipped it last week. I... Here, let me give you a breakdown of what we're going to talk about today. I'm drinking red, red, red. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's today's specialty. It's red, red, wed. Okay, it's really good. Yeah, I'm drinking some red wine because I'm going through at, at 7 p.m. And I'm going through at 8 p.m., sorry. On a carpet. It's on the carpet. So if I spill it, it's game over. And guess what? It's not even my carpet. So pretty ballsy if you ask me. You want to tell me that I don't have balls? Guess again. Guess again. Quick little rundown of what we're going to talk about in this podcast. So the first section, I'm going to talk about my life and everything that happened in the past week because it has been a horrific week. I ruined my very expensive laptop. I I cut my own hair. Then I'm going to talk about the Capitol a little bit. There's actually a very meme-worthy video here that I need to show you because it is gold. We hit we hit the jackpot. We hit the gold mine with that video. I'm going to start crying when we go through that segment. It is so good. Then uh, I want to talk about the trending page on YouTube and a couple interesting things. I know it sounds boring, but trust me, <laughs> I got an explanation for it. I want to talk about short men because short men are great and cool. And then we'll get into some great LGBT stories and a Reddit about grandma and farting on grandma. Okay. So, all right, let's start out with Sam's life. All right. Hold on. Let me just take a sip of my red, red, wed real quick. <clears throat> Almost missed out on the ASMR, but that was today's ASMR swallowing. I was going to make a joke. <laughs> um, what Donald Trump's mom should have done. But she, but unfortunately, okay, I'm sorry. Anyways, so what happened? What happened to the laptop? A series of unfortunate events by Sam Collins. So I have a MacBook. You know, everybody who has a MacBook, everyone who has a Mac has to say they have a Mac. They never say that they have a PC or a laptop or a computer. It is, I have a Mac or I have a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, okay? I'm cooler than you. We really aren't. Anyways, I specifically bought a nice MacBook Pro. I'm, I put uh, all the good stuff in it. You know, I, I, you could do you could customize whatever you wanted internally in it. And since I video edit and I travel, I was like, yes, I'm going to make a very good hefty laptop. Wow, I cannot talk. A laptop? <laughs> Not doing a lot of laughing here after what happened to it. I feel like I'm full of jokes today. I feel like we're on a roll. I'm doing good. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, emphasizing the fact that it is it was expensive. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't out of the, you know, I didn't, it's not out of the park. Okay, but it was it was a good amount of money, and I am very careless with things sometimes. Just I just that's what happens. Okay, I spill a lot of things, a lot. The last MacBook, MacBook that I had, right? Not a laptop. It was a MacBook. I spilled stuff on it too. So this one got it in got it like a year ago, and I. Uh, I made, you know, I chef it up in the bar, so I made my own vodka soda. I used, like I said in one of my other other podcasts, you use some some seltzer water, squeeze some lime in there with some vodka. It's good. I like it. So I had a full cup, full beautiful cup. I spilled it all over the Mac, okay? This was this was a while ago. 
whatever. It was like tweaking. It was kind of weird. The touch bar stopped working immediately. I did all the stuff that you could, flipped it upside down for like two days and whatever. And it was kind of fine. The screen glitched a little bit and then it also would just shut off sometimes, which is not good. But I was like, I just, I had too much anxiety to go through the whole process of going and talking to people and getting it fixed. I just didn't want to do it. Which is stupid because it's literally my job. So, whatever. My laptop was cool. It was fine. One night, okay? Great dramatic story for you. One night, I'm here in the Airbnb. I'm with Sheila. We wanted to watch a show, but it was not on the Canadian Netflix. It was on the American Netflix. So, I, I'm like, yeah, I got my laptop. We can use the VPN. We log in. We use the VPN. We start watching. I was hungry. And I didn't want to cook a whole meal because it was like 8 p.m. And there's this, there's this thing here called Mr. Noodles in Canada. It's like ramen in a cup, you know, a cup of soup ramen. And I wanted to see what the hype was because it's the Canadian ramen brand or something. And I was like, oh, I'll try some Mr. Noodles. So it's in a cup, by the way, if you don't know. You know those cup noodles. So I boil some water, get it, get it going, get the soup going. takes like 120 seconds come back put it on the table i'm sitting the table i'm on right now you can't see it anyways it's a coffee table you know the ones you have in the living room so i got my laptop there i got my soup i'm holding it and i'm eating it put it down on the on the table sometimes because i don't want to hold it the whole time i went to reach over to grab something i forget exactly what it was and the the cup of ramen was full by the way the ramen was not good it was just i just didn't like it i am so sorry i didn't like it i don't know what it just i don't know it tasted not good to me so I was like, okay, whatever, it's mediocre. I'll just eat it because I'm hungry and I, I have to eat it. So I uh, kind of force, forcing eating it. And I was like, I don't even want this. I was, I was going to go throw it out. But then, like I said, I was, I was hungry. So I continue to eat it. Put it down. Then for some reason, I reached over to do something. I don't know what it was. There was something behind the laptop. I guess I wanted to grab it. And then it happened. My, my forearm hit the cup of noodles and it poured out everywhere all into the laptop just that's the only spot it spilled not on the table not on the huge table that's like that's like two by four feet okay it spilled on the small 13 inch mac Air, everywhere the vegetables the vegetables went in the vents uh in the keyboard the noodles were on it so i flipped it upside down and i heard like like sizzling sounds and i was like oh because I have a spare laptop at home. I didn't bring it with me. I wasn't like, I'm going to spill stuff on my laptop. So turn it upside down because you want to get all the liquid out. Uh, whatever. I won't, I'll spare you a lot of the details on the specific sounds and things that were happening. Left it there. Left it upside down overnight. I, you know, I wiped it down. Got all the vegetables off of it, whatever. Then I went to edit in the morning. Like I edit YouTube videos if for some reason you don't know. And um, it was going good. It was cool. It was fine. And then the screen started glitching. It started doing all types of things. And I was like, what the fuck? Okay, yeah, it makes sense because I spilled soup all over it. That that only makes sense that it wouldn't work. I should probably take it in. And I just kept editing. And I was like, I'm going to do it until it dies. And then, and then I put the Mac to my ear and it was making all different types of beautiful sounds. So I did shut it off. And I was like, I got to take this to the store. So this... This in itself is a story. I'm going to fast forward this as much as I can because I got a lot of great stuff to talk about. But <laughs> So I call up Apple. I'm like, hey, where's the nearest place I can take this? And the lady gave me a place, so I went there because I wanted to go to somewhere that's open ASAP. I got to get this done. I go to the store. I bring the, I bring the Mac in. Thank God I had Apple Care Plus because it does cover liquid damages and it's only like 400 CAD. And... If I were to like, if I didn't have that, it might, co you know, it could cost a thousand dollars. It could cost two thousand dollars to repair this Mac, and it's like you don't want it. You could buy another laptop with that, right? So, I was like, yes, it's not going to be that much money, whatever. So I bring it to the guy. He's like, so it's going to take like three to four weeks, and I was like, uh, what? Because <laughs> I can't afford to take three to four weeks off. This is what my this is my job. Like I I have a pot hey man i have a podcast to run you probably don't even care but i gotta run this podcast i gotta run my channel this is my whole life my life is on this stupid computer and 
anyways, he he said that they have a, a rush, like a rush shipment, a rush repair. But you have, you got to pay extra for the rush repair. So I paid extra for the rush repair because I was not going to wait an entire month and not post. So I'm still waiting on that. I actually, what I'm doing right now is I also got a rental Mac, which is a whole other story, but it took forever to get it, but I got it. And I, I had it, I have it for a week. So I'm very happy. But yeah, that was, that was the sad story with my laptop. And that was just the start of my sad week. I'm being dramatic. The week wasn't really that bad. But so what else happened in my week? Huh? Let's see. I cut my own hair because I was bored and it was in my eyes. So if you're watching this on YouTube, so sorry. It could be worse. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Let's get into the. I have to like hunch over to speak into this microphone. And it hurts my back. Anyways, the capital. Are you sick of hearing about it yet? Yeah? Yeah, I bet you are. But <laughs> I wanted to give my take on it. Basically, I mean, I've seen a bunch of people say the same things that I'm about to say, but and I, don't, I don't like to get all political on my channel and stuff, but I don't think this is like a super political happening. I think it's just a really awful happening that should be discussed regardless of the political compass that you own, right? That doesn't make any sense. Regardless of the political... Um, views that you hold okay were any of you on social media when this was happening or the tv or anything or was it in live time because i i was watching a stream by a political commentary youtuber and it was it was insane it was so i couldn't believe what was happening i watched it the whole day just because i do that well when i'm focused on something and it's happening i'm just i'm i'm locked in I'm locked in right so it's like, okay, why why would you a a president lost and you are storming a government building, one of the most important buildings because your president that you like lost. I really would love to know what he did for these people personally. Like how much did he change your life? how this is what i need to know that you would go and br and you would go and commit a crime and break into a building if trump won again i could see people getting all upset and getting riled up because he has taken away people's rights he has scared people he's done a lot of damage okay sum it up a lot of damage and, and i people would feel sick if he won people would be outraged okay but it's like why would they get so mad because he lost and I can't I'm just trying to think just take the loss and move on it's not a big deal you're not supposed to idolize the person who runs the country they're just supposed to do a good job and make people happy and keep the country going you don't have to idolize them and unless they unless they are great you don't have to be obsessed with them you can't you can't defend their every move everybody fucks up so why can't people just admit that like I'll admit when I mess up you know Great leaders will admit when they mess up, but it's more of a cult mentality when you defend somebody's every single action. People make mistakes. It's normal, dude. <laughs> I gotta... This is what I want to show you. All right, there's a guy who admitted on TV that he broke into the building and committed a crime. He literally gave his name. I'll, I'll play you the audio. If you're on YouTube, I'll play you the video. So check it out. Check it out. It's fucking hilarious, dude. Okay. Can you just start with your first and last name and where you're from? Yeah, I'm Thomas Barani from New Jersey. Can you show us your hand? Yeah. How did you get that on your hand? Well, we had uh, stormed into the, the chambers inside and there was a young lady who rushed through the windows. A number of police and secret service were saying, get back, get down, get out of the way. She didn't heed the call and as we kind of raced up to grab people and pull them back, they shot her in the neck and she fell back on me and started saying she was fine, it's cool. Okay. All right, gave his his full name. I actually saw that tape of what he's talking about. I saw the I saw the video of that, and she was going she was going in. I don't know where she was. She was going into something. She just tried to get in through some window or something, and then and then that that happened. So, you know, if if the Secret Service was telling me to get back, 
I would, I, for, for, okay, I wouldn't be there in the first place anyways, but if, if anyone was telling me to get back, it could be a man in the street telling me to get back. I'd be like, oh shit, okay, like why, why, you know? Anyways, I'll continue to play this. And how did you get back out of the building? Uh, riot, riot police came in and started ushering us out with their, their sticks. Where stuff. did you enter the building and where did you exit? Other side with the scaffolding. We tore through the scaffolding through flashbangs and tear gas and blitzed our way in through all the chambers, just trying to get, get into Congress or whoever we could get into and tell them that we need some kind of investigation into this. And what ends up happening is someone might have ended up dead. And that's not the kind of government we can have. Uh, okay, so this guy's confused as to why they got in trouble for storming the building. And also, he thinks going into that building is going to make a difference in the election. Like, what is... What? <laughs> I can't believe these people thought that going into the building would change the election outcome. After it has been proven again and again and again that the whole thing was fine and normal and fair. Like, multiple times. <laughs> but they still think that Trump didn't lose. I... Ah, oh, dude. Thank you for telling us your story. Yeah. Just make sure people know, because this this cannot stand anymore. This is wrong. They don't represent anyone. Now Republican, Democrat, Independent, nobody. And now they'll just they'll kill people. Who are you saying will kill people? Who? I I don't. Police, congressmen and women. They don't care. I mean, they think we're a joke. Two thousand dollar checks was a joke to them. You know, there's people filming us, laughing us as we march down the street. At the uh, the Department of Justice, there's a man in the window laughing at us, filming us. <laughs> you are a joke. <laughs> what? the The people of the 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 American people don't represent the American parties. That doesn't even make any sense. You, of course, they do. <laughs> okay, and and then he mentions two thousand dollar checks. Like, were you going? into the building to get a two thousand dollar check because you're kind of storming in for the wrong reasons here i thought it was to change the election and to to make a difference right but they they think it's funny to not give you a two thousand dollar check i think they're laughing they'd laugh at you more for for storming a building over an election not a two thousand dollar check and here it, it was a joke to them until we got inside and then all of a sudden guns came out why is he pretending to be shocked that guns came out when you broke into a government building? Hello? How many times do I have to say it? <laughs> but I mean, we're, we're at a point now it can't be allowed to stand. We have to do something. People have to do something. Because this could be you or your kids. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> what? Okay, if you're not watching the video of this and you're just listening on the podcast, I want to tell you. So this is just the dude he's being recorded, right? And it just shows his face, like his hat, and he's wearing a hoodie. And he has like a little bit of blood on his hand. You can't even see like a cut. It's just like a, a, a very, very light, minimal amount of blood. Probably the size of like two quarters, okay? Just think about that in your head for a second. He holds up his hand at the end and he says that. He's like... This could be you or your kids. What? What? First of all, I'm smart. And if I had kids, they would be smart too. So they wouldn't be they wouldn't be trying to do this at all. Second of all, where's the cut? I don't even see your cut. Yeah, next time I next time I'm chopping vegetables and I nick myself by accident, I'm gonna be like, oh, this is why I don't chop vegetables. This could be me or my kids. I can't, oh, This could be you or your kids. Don't chop vegetables. Please. Quick little question for you. Have you ever seen the trending page on YouTube? I've seen it a couple of times, and I don't really look at it because everything on it is just extremely uninteresting to me every single time. Right. So I looked at it today. Went on. And the first video that was trending. Guess what it was. 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 Yo. Did you guys just hear that? Did that pick that up? Hold on a second. That shit picked up on my microphone. I don't know what that was. That has never happened to me ever. And that was, it was, you heard that? That's kind of freaky. Who's, uh, who's got a curse going on me here? Is there something paranormal in this, in this Airbnb? Hello? I'm home alone. Hello? Come on out. Please don't come out. I'm just kidding. Don't. I can't see anything because these lights are so bright. Yeah, 
Now we'll get back to the podcast of me shitting my pants. Just kidding. It was probably just a just a little glitch in the system. The laptop's a little old. It's not mine. Anyways, what was I talking about? It was, oh yeah. It was, uh, have you ever watched kids content, right? So the first, where is it? Yeah. The first video that was on trending. Can you guess what it, guess what it, guess what it is? <laughs> nah, can you guess what it is though? I got scared when I said that. Can you guess what it is? Kids content. Okay. It's kids content. And the title of this video was, We Found a Key in Frozen Ice. Mm, yeah, that sounds like exactly what I would love to watch. So fun. Such a fun concept. Obviously, that's fun for the kids to watch. But I just, I was, after I saw that, I was just sitting here thinking like, why, why do people start kids content? It is easy money. But a lot of the people who start it, like, like the Ace family, for example, or whatever, it's the only people I can think of is they're my age and how could it possibly be fun to do that maybe i shouldn't be judging other people for the content they post even if it's for kids because they might be sitting here thinking why does this dude do commentary that shit is so lame and so not funny and it's boring something funny that i also found on the trending page was minecraft you know, Minecraft came out in 2011, and I just thought it was super weird that it's, like, made a giant comeback recently. I know people, I know the game is timeless. Games are timeless, right? I used to play it. I, I play it here and there. But Minecraft has just come back with a, a vengeance for some reason on YouTube. And I'm mad because I want to be a Minecraft YouTuber. I want to do that. I was I tried to be a Minecraft YouTuber like seven years ago. Nobody cared. Now everybody likes Minecraft. That's not fair. I'm going to start a Minecraft channel. It'll be perfect. It'll be fun. Yeah, so look for my Minecraft channel. Coming to you in 2025. Okay. We'll see if people still like the game then. And... <laughs> All right. Hear me out today. Short men deserve rights reasons why we have better posture uh we can be fast right because we're small we're like a little bullet okay so i'd be a great football player and a great basketball player great hockey come on you can't deny it i'm really fast i actually really am i was one of the best on my track team and cross country team. Actually, I was the best on the track team at the um, the short run. I forget what that's called because I haven't done it since middle school. What the hundred meter, the hundred meters? I was the fastest. I always put on it, and I always won. You better watch out. You better watch out, tall men, because I can beat you in a hundred meter dash. I promise. We can also fit in a car and a plane. Okay, you know the tall boys can't. 6'5", good luck sitting in coach. You can't fit? It's uncomfortable for you, isn't it? Isn't it? Anybody who's 6'5". Anyone who's 6'5", listening to this? Six foot, maybe? Can you fit in a plane? That sounds mean. I don't mean it. I'm just saying you have long legs, and I wish I did. We can also fit in a suitcase or a trash bag if it's needed. If you want to sneak a plus one up to the hotel party, and it just so happens to be a short guy... Put them in a suitcase. They're not gonna. They're not gonna know. We can fit in a suitcase. The reason I wanted to talk about being short is I saw this one Twitter post. Also, I also always make short jokes on all the time because I'm short. I'm on the shorter side. There's a post on Twitter talking about how five ten is short for a guy, and then I sat back and I was like, five ten is short for a guy 510 is short what that's like the average height what do you and then and then my heart shattered into a million pieces as well as my confidence i'm just kidding i know that i am uh i'm i'm very i am i'm i am good so height <laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> just thought this was interesting for the 
show lovers out there. So Sheila made me watch all of the Vampire Diaries. I dreaded going into it. Okay, I was like, what is this Vampire Diaries? I, I don't even like the sound of it, okay? And now, after watching the entire show, I love it. It is a great show. I think it's awesome. I want to date Damon Salvatore, okay? Or, or maybe Stefan. Don't tell Sheila I said that because she actually doesn't watch my podcasts. And if you clip it and you send it to her, watch what happens. Just watch. Just wait. But we made a deal because I originally thought I would hate The Vampire Diaries, but I love it. I would rate it like 10 out of 10 for a show. Our deal was that if I watch The Vampire Diaries, she will watch Jersey Shore. So if any of you like Jersey Shore, you know what she's in for. I'm just, I'm so excited to show her. That shit, that was the funniest thing when I was a teenager. That show is the best. I had the biggest crush on Snooki. Anyways, so we're going to come to conclude this podcast after talking about myself basically the entire time. I'm so sorry. I hope you enjoyed it though. Let me know. So I got two of these LGBT stories for you and I'm going to read the Reddit last. Just like to switch it up as always because these ones are really great. We've got a, a little bit of a long one and a short one here. So let me start out with this long one, right? I want to start by giving some background to my story. I'm from San... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm from San Francisco, which is known for being a very LGBTQ supportive city. However, my family is very religious and they don't fit the stereotype that all San Franciscans are liberal and accepting. I've attended private Christian schools all my life, so I've had my share of homophobia. In seventh grade, I realized I was gay. And honestly, I was so relieved because I was scared that I would have to kiss a girl, mostly because my friends were all girls. However, I was terrified of telling anyone, so I kept my orientation a secret until a year later when a very manipulative friend of mine somehow forced me into coming out to her. She suddenly loved hanging out with me, and although I didn't see it at the time, it was because she wa just wanted a gay best friend. She ended up forcing me to come out to my other friends when I was not ready, and even though my other friends are great people who didn't care at all, I was still very scared because I never knew to whom she would make me tell next. Later that year, some people outwardly refused to vote for me in the student council because they thought I was too gay and feminine, and I was devastated. The guys in my class made fun of me when I had to talk to them for projects or interact with them at all. Overall, I became a very closed off person. When it came time for me to go to high school, I was scared because I didn't feel like I would be accepted by an entirely new group of people, especially at my school which was very religious. I ended up meeting some great people, even though it took me two years, but I still could not even get myself to say the word gay in front of them. Anyway, this past summer I met up with one of my best friends, safely of course, for COVID, and I decided that it was time to come out. I sat there for like 20 minutes because I couldn't even speak. I was that scared. I finally said that I was gay with many tears, and while I was afraid that she would hate me, she was so supportive of me and made me feel so special. We talked for a while, and I feel like we've been closer ever since. I still haven't told my parents or any other family members, but I'm working on that. It might take a while, but I'm working on getting there. I guess the message to my story is that you should try to seek out friends who will support you no matter what. People who hate you because you're gay, trans, lesbian, pansexual, etc. are not your friends. There's someone out there who will be your friend for who you are, and even though it may take a while to meet them, it's possible. I love that. That I love that little ending. I, I wanted to share that because of the, the entire great message and how scary it can be, you know, wherever you are. You know, San Francisco, very LGBT friendly, but the religious schools and the people who still made fun of him for being too what was it being too uh feminine a man can be the slightest a man can be the slightest bit feminine and people just say that it's too much too much way too much and it's just like i can people can't let people live you know yeah the story was super good you know he came from san francisco it's super lgbt friendly but kids in school still made fun of him for being too feminine or whatever and it's just it shows how places can be but in the end you know still a happy story you know still accepted himself and the message there at the end I thought that was good that's exactly how I think people are gonna hate you for being literally for being gay literally for being too feminine for being lesbian for being trans whatever it is anything LGBT I don't entirely know why but 
sometimes people are just like that and they're not good humans but you are going to find friends who support you and help you through this and you know i make my friends my family let me give you this other lgbt story and then grandma getting farted on i grew up in a very religious household and i knew that my dad wouldn't support me but i didn't know how serious they really were about it when i was 15 i was really depressed and i thought that if i went on a date with a girl it might help the benefit of having homophobic parents is that they won't suspect anything. That's what I thought, and I was probably right. So I told my dad I was going downtown to hang out with my friend, but my dad had to return library books, and I didn't know, so he saw me holding my girlfriend's hand. He stopped in the middle of the road, causing a traffic hazard, yelled at me through his window, and took me home. That night he tried to throw me out, but my mom wouldn't stand for it, so the two of us left, and I haven't seen my dad since. I'm so grateful for my mom and everything she's done for me. This was a short one but I thought it spoke a lot. At least you have your mom there for you, you know? I feel like there's always going to be that one person. Like, that doesn't mean that you can't go and find a friend who's going to love you for you because you're not weird for being gay. You're not weird for being trans. There's so many gay and trans people. Just because it's not the most popular doesn't mean it's super weird and gross. I just, some people just need to take a chill pill. I, I, I just don't understand. <laughs> I really don't. But yeah, I thought I would share these stories because, you know, they both have a pretty happy ending. The second one, not the happiest ending, but, you know, still a little bit of positive in there. And we can end this podcast on a lighter note about grandma. All right. So found this subreddit. Am I the asshole? for telling my son that the reason grandma doesn't visit anymore is because she got farted on. Okay, and here's the story. My mom lives across the country and we see her maybe once a year. We used to be very close, but she could not accept my wife. And my mom can be a massive spoiled brat, so if she doesn't like someone, they're going to know it. My mom has a lot of money and my wife comes from a poor background, so my mom always has thought she was better. She would make little digs about my wife not being classy or feminine, my wife is a pretty confrontational person, so she did not take my mom's bullshit. My mom came to visit about six years ago and was in a bad mood because my stepdad refused to come because of the house, food, and no hotels being around. My mom was kind of codependent and was not happy. She made her typical digs during the stay, and then it came time for me to drive her to the airport. Okay, side note, this is where it gets juicy. Alright. My wife was pregnant, and if you know what pregnancy farts smell like, you will get why this was the perfect opportunity. I locked all of the windows and my wife blasted farts the entire ride to the airport. Immature, yes, but a great moment in our marriage. <laughs> my mom was furious and ended up barely talking to me for months. I didn't say congrats when her son was born. We, we've kind of worked through it, but she no longer makes an effort to see us and won't visit, so we see her about once a year when we visit family. My five-year-old son asks why grandma doesn't visit anymore, because his other grandma visits all the time. I told him grandma doesn't visit because she got farted on and told him the story. Being a five-year-old boy, he thought it was hilarious. He ended up bringing it up in front of my mom during our monthly video chat. My mom demanded to know why I told him. I said it was a funny story and the truth and that I don't like to lie. My mom teared up and got off call. Now she is saying that she should have gone no contact back then and this is humiliating. She called my wife trash and a pig, so we got into it. I just can't believe she cares more about farts than her family. Okay. So, I think the original poster, I think this guy is kind of an asshole, okay? Yes, the mom is rude for being rude. But but you trapped grandma in a car with the windows up with farts? I don't even, I don't want to know what pregnancy, pregnancy farts smell like, okay? If I had to sit in a car, I'm going to, how long was the car ride? I'm going to just, let's just pretend it's like like a 25 minute thing to the airport usually it's like 25 minutes but sometimes it's long because airports can be far so if it was an hour i'm surprised grandma is still alive instead of farting up the entire car why didn't they just sit down and have a normal conversation like if this is actually a real thing i don't know if this is bullshit or whatever or someone's like trolling but if it's real why didn't you just have an adult conversation about it why did you trap grandma with pregnancy farts is my thing what the fuck i wouldn't even that is that is torture honestly if somebody trapped me in a car instead of confronting me about the issues that they had with me and farted for 30 minutes 
I would probably not talk to them again either. So, hey, if you if me and you ever get in an argument and you want to never talk to me again, just do that and I will never talk to you again. Okay, deal? All right, so I'm going to go now. Hey, thanks for listening. If you haven't rated the podcast and you're able to do so, make sure you go do it. If you haven't subbed to the channel or anywhere you're listening to the podcast, make sure you do it. I appreciate you all listening so much. Sorry for missing that week. Hopefully, by the time my next episode is up, I... Uh, My laptop will be okay and recovered, so I'll see you all then. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.